Okay, today I am showing you how to work on your Ambigen, your David Hockney inspired simulated joiner. So the notes that we looked at about David Hockney can be found on Porta Portal. If you scroll down, you'll see the David Hockney link. You can review the slides and see the joiners that we looked at. Also on the slides are the explanation of the first joiner you're making, which is the simulated joiner. So remember, this is a joiner that comes just from one photo that you've taken. So this is my example, and we are using Photoshop to make it look like it's actually a joiner that's made up of multiple pictures. I would recommend a picture that the thing that you like, the main part, does not go all the way to every single edge because it will not work if all of your tiny squares go to every edge. I know some of Hockney's joiners work like that in a real joiner, but with the simulated joiner that will not work. So something like this would be great, and you'll see me make a different example today. So written out here are the steps, which as always can be a little bit confusing if you haven't seen the actual demonstration, so that's what I'm about to show you in Photoshop. So to get started making your simulated joiner that comes from one photo that you took, first you need to save the photo. So if it's on your phone, you need to go through Google Drive, if it's a JPEG, or Dropbox, if it's an HEIC file. Remember, I have a link on Porta Portal showing you how to convert to JPEG. The computer cannot read HEIC, which is what most of the new iPhones capture when you take a picture. So if you haven't changed in the phone to most compatible to JPEG, or if you download and find that it is an HEIC -E file, you need to go back to this link and scroll all the way down to step number three to follow along with how to convert the HEIC to JPEG with Dropbox. And remember, the main thing that you're watching for is on the cell phone portion that you click on JPEG when you're on the phone because once you get it to the computer, you won't have that option. So on your phone, you're downloading the Dropbox app, uploading your picture to the cloud, to Dropbox from your phone. You're telling Dropbox you want to save this as a JPEG. Go get on your computer, go get on Google Chrome, go to dropbox.com, do not download the Dropbox program, and then go ahead and just download your JPEG file. So that's super simple, and you should already know how to do that. If your picture is on an SD card, then you need to go up to the front of the classroom and get an SD card reader from the teal bucket behind my computer screen, and then go ahead and plug in the SD card, locate the picture that you want, right-click it and copy it, and then paste it to your photo class folder. So assuming that you have your picture, we're going to get started in Photoshop. So we want to do File Open, and then go ahead and figure out where your picture is. So my pictures are in my photo class folder, which is under my student ID, and I made a folder called David Hockney Joiners. And because, remember, we're making two joiners, I went ahead and made a folder for this one, which is a joiner from one picture. I put my two photo options in here that I was deciding between, and I'm going to go ahead and use this one today. So this is a picture that I took um, in Venice when we were on our spring break tour last year. I like this picture because it doesn't the main part, like that I want to be my joiner, doesn't go all the way to the edges. So I have some sky and clouds, clouds, <laughs> sky and water for some negative space in this piece. So I don't have to go all the way to the edges with my tiny little rectangles, which are the fake photos that are making up our pretend joiner here. So now that I've got my photo open, the next step is make a new layer. Let's make my screen a little bigger. Remember this button right here. If you hover over top, it should say what it is, which is create a new layer. So we're going to click on this. So now you have a new layer. If you look at the icon right here, you'll see the checkerboard, which you should know that means it is transparent, it is see-through, it is clear, there is nothing there. So I want you to paint this layer white. So you're gonna go to the paint bucket 
which lives underneath the gradient. So I'm pressing down, getting the paint bucket. If your color picker looks like this right now, here is a little trick. You can click this curved arrow to swap these two colors, click to get the white, and then make sure you go ahead and switch those back. So now I've got my background layer, that's my original picture. I've got the new layer that I just made, I painted it white, and then I need to now duplicate my background layer, the original picture, by right clicking it, say duplicate layer. I want you to name this layer, so this is super important, don't just click on OK, um, and go ahead and call this source, and then press OK. What we want to do now is drag source to the top. This is super important that you have this photo sandwich here. So you've got the first picture you opened, the new white layer which you painted, and then the top layer which you just dragged to the top. And again, please make sure that it is named source so you don't get confused. So with this source layer active, this is the main layer you will work from. So of course, that's why it's named source. I want you to click the add layer style or layer effects button. So this is conveniently like labeled FX if you look down here. So we're going to click on that. I want you to now click on the button that says drop shadow. So that's at the bottom and you'll get this pop-up. This has a ton of stuff onto it, but you don't need to click everything you see. Pretty much what we're doing here is we are making a simulated drop shadow. So this is like a fake little shadow underneath each of our tiny pictures. I'll show you on my example in just a second once I choose my settings. Um, and so each of these little pictures that will be on your joiner will look like they have a tiny bit of a shadow underneath the corner, which will make them look a little bit more real. So when we have this drop shadow uh, window open, you're going to use this little spinning wheel to turn the angle of your drop shadow. Um, I was thinking about where the sun might be shining, maybe from this corner, maybe from this corner in my example here. So in my written notes, I chose 140 for the example, I think, around here. So that's close enough. So I'll go ahead and use that for my example. Um, for distance, I... Again, some of you guys remember use the sliders, don't just type random numbers. I'm dragging this. If you look at the preview here, you can see it changing. So pretend this is your little picture. I usually pick about 14 and that moves the shadow over just a tiny bit. For size, it's on five. I usually do leave it at five. Next, uh, the in written instructions, if you're looking at them, if you're getting confused, when it says click stroke checkbox, if you look over here to the left, this one, stroke, click the checkbox. Now if you look here, this is a, again a preview of what all of those tiny pictures will look like. So again, if you look at my settings, um, I was trying to get it on 140, I'll just type it. So I normally do 140 for the angle, so that's like the light is shining from here and it comes across here, producing the shadow in the bottom right corner. I changed the spacing of the shadow and then the size is already five. I'm leaving it at that. Adding a stroke puts that thin little border around the edges. Once I've got all that set, I'm gonna press okay. Now, Double check, look right here, make sure that you see each of these settings that we just set up on the source layer. This is really important why you need to make sure that you are working from the source layer because that's where all of these effects are now placed. You should not be working from the background layer, just go ahead and pretend that does not exist as you work through your joiner. So the rest of the process, you're pretty much going to use the rectangular marquee and draw your tiny little photos. I'm gonna show you my example from last time again here. 
You can see each of these are the pretend pictures that are making up my full size joiner. And there are some empty spaces that I left between just because I think that kind of helps it look a little bit more realistic with this Photoshop version. I'll also show you how you can rotate some of the photos so they look again a little bit more not perfect. Um, and you can also see the shadows underneath. So I'm going to bring my rectangular marquee tool as my active tool and then I'm just going to make sure I'm on the source layer. So now I'm going to draw my first little uh, photo square or photo rectangle. I'm going to set this one right here and I'm imagining this is where my first mini picture will be. So I'm making this box and then I'm going to press Control J. Now if you look here in my layers panel, that already went ahead and made my first tiny little photo. If I click the eyeball on the source layer, I can preview what my finished piece will work like. So as you can imagine, you're going to click back onto the source layer. So that's super important that you make sure you're on the right layer. I'm going to make my next little rectangle. Um, you might want to pay attention to these pop-up numbers to try to have your rectangles be consistent. That's just a thing you might want to focus on so that your rectangles look the same size. And then once I've got my rectangle set, I'm going to press Control J. Go back to the source layer. Super important that you don't miss that step. Make your next rectangle. Control J and go back to the source layer. The quick key for switching between I'm going to do Control J. The quick key between uh, switching between a layer above and a layer below if you would like to not have to keep scrolling down and clicking source as you add more and more photos. When I'm on the layer right above source, I can press alt and then the left bracket and that will jump you down one layer if you would like to do that. So that's a nice helpful little quick key that you can use as you move through this. So now I'm just repeating making my little mini photos. So that was control J and then alt left bracket to jump down. Next little rectangle. Trying to be consistent with my sizing. Control J. If you need to write these quick keys down that might be a good idea because you don't want to be pressing the wrong things and do something weird in your Photoshop because if you're watching this video I may not be here to help you. So again I'm making sure I'm on the right layer which is the source layer. Control J and then Alt left bracket to jump back down to the source layer. Make a new rectangle. Hmm. Control J, Alt left bracket, bounce back down to the source layer. As you're working, click the eyeball next to source. It may take a little bit to load as you have more and more of these tiny photos and you can see how your piece is actually looking. So of course I have some more work to do. I will come back in a minute and show you guys the finishing touches. So I've moved along a little bit more. I wanted to show you a pop-up that you might get. I went ahead and made my next little tiny picture and I'm pressing Control J to make my photo. So if I do control J, notice this pop-up could not make a new layer from the selection because the selected area is empty. This is because I forgot to go back to the source layer. So if you see this, don't freak out, don't shut down, just press OK and then be like, oh, whoops, I wasn't on the source layer. Now I can press control J. I don't even have to redraw the rectangle and everything is good. Okay, so finishing up, I have put all of my tiny little pictures onto my joiner. I'm clicking the eyeball to see if I like how everything looks. I think it fills the space pretty well. Lastly, just to make it look a little less in a little less perfect, I want to slightly rotate some of these pieces. So for example, this one I might turn. I can right click on this layer, click 
layer 19, click the eyeball, and it's going kind of slow. And I'm going to do Control T to turn it just a little bit. I'll repeat, and then to finish up, you're going to save as a JPEG. So it loads really slow because I have a lot of layers, and so we'll 